Snapchat's granddaughter. You might know her as Sandy. If you might be wondering why she has a beautiful picture in front of her real face, she is using this time of quarantine to have a treatment done on her face. She has asked me to help her make this video. Hi, if any of you uh, have ever done the Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby, he speaks of the crisis of belief. My story, my journey here on this earth has included five such times. The crisis of belief is explained as times when something happens in our life, when our beliefs are challenged and we are required to put faith into action. As I started to think back on my life, I know that I've had at least five main times. I am a native Floridian, born in Miami, but moved to Jacksonville when I was eight years old and have lived there most of my life except for college and then moving to Tallahassee in 2006. I was blessed to have Christian parents and one older sister, Barbara, affectionately known as BB. I was raised in the Baptist church and accepted Jesus as my savior when baptized when I was 12 years old. My first crisis of belief came as a young woman. I had been married two years and I was 24 years old. We only had one car and I picked my husband at work. I picked up my husband at work every day. My daddy and my husband worked at the same insurance company. This particular day, my dad came out first and he stuck his head in my car window to say that he and mom were headed to Miami that afternoon on a business trip. I probably responded with something like, okay, have a safe trip, see you next week. On their return trip home on Saturday, my daddy had a massive heart attack on the airplane and died and I never saw him alive again. He was only 60 years old. So the first lesson I learned was always tell the ones you love that you love them every time you part. I know that my daddy knew I loved him, but I didn't say it the last time I saw him and it affected and changed me forever. The second lesson I learned through this experience is God is my strength and my hope. Next, I attended a Grisillo weekend, which is a retreat and a mountaintop experience. Although I had walked the aisle when I was 12 years old, this experience revealed to me that I had not yet surrendered all of my life to him. My crisis of belief was in allowing Jesus to be the Lord over all of it. I learned that God is unconditional love and that he cares about every aspect of life from the tiniest, insignificant, to the monumental important. I was on fire for God and I prayed for a ministry to bring others into the kingdom. And God told me at that time, my ministry was to be a good wife and a good mother to my children and to love others. I told him, okay, loving is something I can do pretty easily. But over the years, he has brought a lot of people into my life that have challenged that remark. I was 33 years old at that time. The third crisis of belief came in 1986 when my sweet, loving, wonderful mother had a massive stroke. Up until that point, she had been a vibrant, life-loving, fun-loving, powerful woman of God. She became paralyzed and unable to speak and bedridden, and she stayed that way for five and a half years, which I had a lot of difficulty understanding. She died in 1991, and I was 45 years old. Lesson learned, God is sufficient for all of our needs, and he is all-knowing. The next crisis of belief came sooner than the others, which had been averaging about every 10 to 12 years. I went through a separation and divorce from my husband of 25 years. I had prayed for the marriage to be healed, but it was not. I questioned God a lot and expressed my hurt and pain and fear. His message to me over and over again through this time and through numerous ways was no matter what, I am with you. So the lesson learned in this crisis was God is faithful and sovereign and his love is enough. The fifth crisis of belief came in the years between 2006 and 2010. My daughter was living here in Tallahassee and was pregnant with her first child when she and her husband came up with the idea for me to move to Tallahassee from Jacksonville. 
and for us to open up a children's store together to support us. It was a crazy idea in March, but it became a reality in June. God opened up doors, made all things fall into place, and I was living here by the time my first granddaughter was born on June 14th of 2006. My friends and some family thought I'd lost my mind, but after praying a lot, I believe this is what God wanted me to do. I left behind my home, my church, job that I'd had for 34 years. I used my home in Jacksonville as collateral for the business loan. So when the economy bottomed out in 2008, our business was naturally affected. I lost my home in Jacksonville and a lot of other investments and I was facing bankruptcy. Not only was my faith in crisis, but I personally, emotionally, and spiritually was in crisis. I set aside the first week in January of 2010 to seek the Lord and stay flat on my face until I heard from him. I was doubting and questioning everything. Had I heard him wrong about moving over here? Was I a fool to risk so much? Was my future as bleak as I feared it would be? And on and on. During my appointment with God that January, he led me to his word in Ecclesiastes 3. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. I heard him say to me that I had heard him correctly and I had followed his directions and he assured me that I was going to live through this and be all right. Lesson learned, God can be trusted and he covers and protects me through all circumstances. All of life experiences have a purpose and make us who we ultimately are. Now fast forward and I'll give you an update to 2020. I never did have to file for bankruptcy um, back in 2010. Most of the debts have been wiped off of my credit standing. And then in late of 2018, after four months of hospitalization, I lost my only sister. I lost my job where I worked for three years in December of 2018. So I have begun a new chapter and I asked, what now, Lord? Ever since my surrender at the age of 33, my prayer has been, Father, I want my life to matter and your purpose for me to be fulfilled. I have prayed and asked for his direction on and off for many months. During this time, he reminded me of a statement that my father had quoted often and used in his testimony, which said, the best investment a businessman can make is an investment in the living casting his shadow across the pathway of young men, encouraging them to follow in his footsteps. Crops may fail, the stock market is unsteady, and businesses may fail. But the dividends from a life invested in Christ can never be reduced or lost. In remembering this quote, I believe God gave me his answer. I want to invest my time, energy, and talent into the lives of young people. Do you remember that year when Scott asked us to pray about a, a word, a word from God um, that we would concentrate on and pray about and try to fulfill that year? My word um, was mentor. I've prayed for opportunities, and he's opening doors, and I'm walking through them, and I praise him and thank him. Lesson learned. Praying and waiting for God's direction is not only difficult, it is the only way to move forward. I keep thinking that there won't be any more times when my belief or faiths are in crisis. But I also see when I look back that it was during those times that I learned invaluable lessons and grew to be a stronger, better equipped Christ follower. A favorite quote of mine is this, Faith is not faith until it is tested. The way we respond in suffering can either contradict the words of our profession or it can bring glory to God. That's my story. Amen.